Marcel Kittel wearing the red today as the leader of the points classification. He's 27, he's from Arnstadt in Germany. He's got a peculiar 100% win record at the Giro. And it's peculiar in the sense that he's won all three road stages that he's ever ridden on the Tour of Italy, Marcel Kittel. But none of them have taken place on Italian roads so far. He won in Belfast in the rain a couple of years ago. He won in Dublin the day after when it had just about dried up in a, a very difficult approach. A couple of little chicanes in towards the finish. He was a long way behind and made himself back up towards the front just in time there. And he won perfectly in Neymarken yesterday. And, and when he hit the front, it really was not in doubt. Do you expect him to carry on to Italy this time and try and win a few stages there? Well, hope so. Uh, when we see him back in uh, Belfast and Dublin two years ago, you know, we were saying how many stages he's going to win in this uh, Giro, and then he just got sick and never got back to Italy, got back to our Italian side. Uh, hopefully, you know, this year that we will see him uh, getting to Italy because he's looking very impressive. And yesterday it was amazing. You know, they moved up there in that final. Even to do that in the final kilometre, kilometre and a half, to be able to move up, from maybe 20, 25th position, the way the Etix Quick Step riders done that. And the riders that are doing that, of course, they get you to the position. But then Kittel has to make the sprint himself. He arrived in the wheel there of uh, De Marais from FDJ. And then he was waiting, waiting for De Marais. I think he was saying, is he ever going to start the sprint? And eventually he decided now is the moment because we're going to get caught from riders coming from behind. He was afraid of that flush of riders coming up left and right. And he took up the sprint and we could see Delange made the move to just get out of the way and he always made contact with Kittel, but the moment Kittel just turned on the gas, he was just going away all the time from everybody else. Just under 80 k's to go, Von Sale, Chalingi, Verlato and Amesketa all out there in the break. Five minutes and 31, the gap is holding nice and steady, nice and stable at the minute. And we're heading towards the second of two intermediate sprints of the day. After that, we'll have one climb, a fourth category climb for the King of the Mountains. That will come at Postbank. We expect a sprint finish after two laps. And then a transfer to Italy tomorrow. Two charter flights from Amsterdam all the way down to La Mezia Terme down in Calabria. Thompson and Niki Lauda's own airline taking them down there. Hope the uh, piloting's not being done by him. It might be a rough ride, as you were saying, Sean, before we went on air otherwise. We're off for a quick break. We'll be back with the rest of this third stage of the Giro in just a minute on the home of cycling. Sean, I'm glad you mentioned Marcel Kittel looked gone on a bike yesterday because the Italian press are obsessed with looks at the opening of this Giro d'Italia. Gazzetta dello Sport today did a huge two-page spread about how good Kittel and Dumoulin looked. They were the poster boys of cycling, they were saying. It was Ciro Scognamiglio, the, the well-known Italian journalist, who was saying that Marcel Kittel has a physique like Apollo, the Greek god. Tom Dumoulin has magnetic eyes. They could not believe how good they had the pictures for the papers. It's been uh, a real obsession with aesthetics to go with Italian culture, really. Everybody decked out in pink. They've loved the way that the Giro has looked on television. They talked about the beauty of the Giro, the elegance of the Maglia Rosa yesterday on the shoulders of Tom Dumoulin. 